2020 presidential candidates are making their pitches to Iowa voters at the state fair. Voters lined up to hear the presidential hopefuls deliver short stump speeches. Gun control dominated much of the conversation this weekend as the people who will cast the first caucus votes try to navigate the crowded Democratic field. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now from the Iowa State Fair in Des Moines. So, Caitlin, you spoke with Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard Saturday. She told you she's pausing her campaign to return to active duty with the Army. Let's listen. I love our country. I love being able to serve our country in so many ways, including as a soldier. And so, while some people are telling me, like, gosh, this is a terrible time to leave the campaign. Uh, can't you find a way out of it? Um, you know, the, the, that's not what this is about. You know, I don't, I'm not really thinking about how uh, this will impact my campaign. I'm looking forward to being able to fulfill my, my service and my responsibility. Now, Congresswoman Gabbard said politics played no role in this decision, but could her stepping away from the campaign actually be an effective political strategy? Great, Elaine. I asked the Congresswoman when we sat down last night for this exclusive interview, and we'll have more of this tomorrow at 9 o'clock on CBSN. I asked her kind of what effect this would have on her campaign, and she said that she didn't think twice about it, that uh, she was ready to go, and that her campaign would be operating just fine without her. She will not be able to check in with her campaign or do any sort of campaigning uh, while she's away, but she says that this is part of uh, what she is trying to uh, show the American people and identify herself as fit to be commander in chief. She is a veteran. Uh, she has served tours. She is now going on active duty. This is something that we haven't really seen from candidates before leaving the campaign trail uh, to go on active duty. So this is a new uh, and, and really um, unprecedented uh, thing for these Democratic candidates. And I also asked her kind of what perspective this would provide her because she's not done this before as a presidential candidate and she said we'll see. Hmm, I look forward to hearing the rest of that conversation. Um, Caitlin, the group Every Town for Gun Safety hosted a forum Saturday at the State Fair focusing on gun control. There was an emotional moment from candidate Andrew Yang when he heard the story of a mother who lost a daughter due to an unintentional shooting. How has the issue of gun control and gun violence resonated with Iowa voters? Well, Iowa voters that we've talked to have said that this is an issue of concern, and even if it wasn't at the top of their priority list, they are now, uh, it is top of mind, at least in the past few days, given those shootings. What was very interesting to hear from Andrew Yang is that, you know, he's been a political outsider. He hasn't uh, been on Capitol Hill uh, dealing with these issues. He hasn't uh, been, you know, meeting with these families. This was an entry point for him. And you saw that really raw emotion uh, that he had. He referenced his two kids and how he was thinking about them, his two young children. Uh, and that emotion, I really do think, kind of spoke for so many people that it was, uh, it was different to see on the campaign trail. Oftentimes, politicians who have been around this for a long time calling for change, certainly, but also kind of used to it in some ways. This seemed to be a, a new area for Andrew Yang, and I think that reflected uh, this, this uh, an additional pressure point uh, that he was trying to say this can't, uh, we can't not do something about this. Yeah, it was really um, striking to sort of see that kind of reaction. Um, so, Caitlin, what other issues are Iowa voters talking about? Well, health care seems to be the top issue. Uh, here in Iowa, though, it's really about access to it, especially in rural areas, access to health care coverage and uh, the rising costs of that coverage. So you've seen candidates, when they come to Iowa, talk about their plans for rural America. Elizabeth Warren, for example, has been really kind of tailoring her message here in Iowa. She has a robust ground game, has been working uh, for a while to kind of build that up. Certainly, she's talked about um, expanding broadband internet, um, access 
uh, providing resources to rural hospitals. Others here campaigning, Amy Klobuchar and others, have talked about the president's trade policies. That has a direct impact on voters here in Iowa. And of course, the climate. Um, voters that we've talked to are concerned about climate, concerned about climate change, at least Democratic voters that we talked to. And the candidates here have been talking about that a lot as well. So we have a nationalized campaign going on, but here in Iowa, it kind of reminds you uh, how some voters are, are focused on very particular issues and they want the candidates to address it. I'd also say, too, that it is so early, and that's a takeaway we've been having, uh, taking from these, these voters, is that they're just coming back from, from summer breaks, they're enjoying the fair, and they're just starting to learn about some of these candidates. So while we're looking at the polls and while we're focusing uh, on what the campaigns are doing, it's a good reminder to all of us that sometimes uh, it, it, it's going to take a little while for some of these voters to really get plugged in. Absolutely, a bit of a reality check for some of us here who are sort of reporting on this each day. Caitlin Huey Burns in Iowa for us. Caitlin, thank you very much. Thank you, Elaine. And I just have to say, last time I saw you, I uh, shared one of our treats. Today we have uh, from our kind apple cart next door that we've, that's we that been so kind to host us all week. Uh, these are apple egg rolls. Adam and apple I tried these yesterday, rolls. and I can say from experience that they're they're quite good. So we'll try to bring some back for you in New York tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work, but I guess I'm curious. All right, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin Huey Burns, yeah. thank you so much, Caitlin. Culinary experience. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks.